Hey, happy Friday, everybody. And guess who's with us again on this Friday? It must mean it's a Frog Friday. Hi, come with the frog here. And Mr. Nison are going to play a little song for you. Kermie, do you want to play the piano and I sing? Or I play the piano and you sing? Well, yeah, I don't know. And so I'll play and we'll both sing. Okay? Sound great? Okay, so here we go. Happy Friday, everybody. You know, if you like the videos, you can always officially like them on YouTube. But I know some of you are doing your patriotic duty and you're like, Mr. Nison, I really enjoy them, but I can't like them. Because if I like them, they might go viral. And we're trying to flatten the curve. We don't want them to go viral. And so, you know, that's why I'm not doing it. But Mr. Nison, I, I do have a question. A student asked me this the other day. They said, if we're staying inside because we don't want to catch the virus, wait, the phone's ringing. Who is this? Let me see. Knock, knock. Who's there? Well, I am. I am at the computer, and I cannot talk on the phone. And so, we'll get back to him in a second. But I was saying is a student asked me the other day, they're like, Mr. Nyson, if we're all staying inside because we're trying to not catch a virus, but then I sit in front of a computer all day long and computers get viruses, I could catch a virus from the computer. And then my entire mind will just get wiped blank. Whoa, never thought about that. And then I asked the student, I said, do you even know what a computer virus is? They're like, no. I said, a computer virus is a terminal illness. <laughs> what do you expect? It's a Friday. And so, get the attendance taken. It's Friday, May 15th. And this is your e-learning. Let's see what we have in store for Geometry Day. Remember, some of you did take the State Math Counts competition. Great job on that. And so, today... They said it's going to be Pacific time, but so Eastern time, it's going to be 614 because it's 314 Pacific time. They're going to have the world's largest countdown around. I don't know quite how it's worked, but it'll probably be exciting, and you might want to be there to participate on that. And so click on that link and let me know how it goes. And so today for geometry, we're going to talk about three dimensional coordinates. And so some of it, there's a couple problems where. You're going to have to graph them in three dimensions. But the homework tonight is page 718, way at the back, 1 to 29 odd. And so it is assignment number 127. And so also make sure you send in your logic problems this weekend and get those warm-ups done on Khan Academy. So don't lose track of those. And so get all those done. That's an easy way. And the more points we have in the class, the better it is for you to get a good grade. And that's one reason we're doing them, is so we can have more points. We usually have a 1,000 points. And we're not even close to that in this e-learning stuff. And so that's a way to get more points. And so also, some of you have already sent in your logic, so that's a great job. But today, this is Notes 127. And we're going to talk about plotting points in three dimensions. And so I have a picture for you here. I'm going to move myself a little smaller and maybe put myself over here for now or make myself a little bigger and so when we plot points in three dimensions you have your x and y axis but the book and things doesn't keep the x and y axis upright it lays them down into the x y plane like flat on your paper 
And so normally the XY plane is like straight up. But then it's like you lay the XY plane down and then coming out of that is the Z axis. And so when you have a triple ordered pair, you have an X and a Y. But then we have a Z. We are all three dimensional, except when I'm on a picture on a computer, I guess I'm two dimensional. And so I'm just an X and a Y. But really in real life, I have an X, a Y, and a Z. And so we have an X, a Y, and a Z. And so some of this, before there was all this computer technology, we used to have to plot points and be half artists trying to get this done. So the x-axis is laying down with the y. We lay it down. And we always put the positive one towards us here. This is the positive end of the x-axis. And over here is the negative end of the x-axis. Here is the positive end of the y-axis. Here is the negative end of the y-axis. And here is the positive end of the z-axis. And of course, down here would be the negative end of the z-axis. And so we have some planes, and you can see these three different sheets, like the plane that lies down here. Maybe I should write it in green. Well, it might be kind of hard to see. But this plane is called the XY plane because it's where the X and the Y axis. The Z coordinate is zero. If your X coordinate is zero, you would be right here. This would be the YZ plane. This green sheet right here would be the YZ plane. And this green sheet right here would be the XZ plane. You're in the XZ plane if the Y coordinate is zero. You're in the YZ plane if the X coordinate is zero. You're in the XY plane if the Z coordinate is zero. And believe it or not, those are some questions that you have tonight. Okay? So there's a couple questions where you actually have to plot these points. And so when you plot them, you got to be parallel to what you're plotting. So if I was going to plot the point negative 6, that's my x. I guess I should change color so you can see it better. But here is the positive x-axis. Here's the negative x-axis. So if I was going negative 6, it would be negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and negative 6. So here's negative 6. But then if I'm going 4 in the y-axis, here's the positive y-axis, I'm going this way, one, two, three, four. But the way you do that is you need to plot that parallel to the y-axis. So like here, this isn't going to line up right. I'll adjust it. Okay, switch back. Here we go. And so when I'm plotting the point, I go back negative 6, whoop, but then I go over 4. Well, it's like, how far over do I go? Well, you're going the same distance, 1, 2, 3, 4, like you are here. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's why you have to be half artiste. And so that would be 4. You're kind of like making a parallelogram if you connected this. Because this line would be parallel to your x-axis. And so you would go back 6, right 4, but then we're going to go down 2. Well, here's your z-axis and the negative part's down here. So here's negative 2. Well, this is kind of like you're making a box. And if you look at this example right here, you can see the three-dimensional box. We went right x, or that way x. I guess that's not right, but... And then this way, Y, and then we went up Z this way. And so it's like the ver ver vertex of a box. And so when we go straight down, we'll go straight down two. Well, how far? I, there's nothing marked over here. Well, it has to be the same distance as this. So it's like you're going one, two. And that would be the point in three dimensions. And if you actually drew the whole box, this would come over like this. And then this would come back parallel like this. And you would have, if I drew these lightly here, these would be the corners of your box. That one side's length 2, one side's length 4, one side's length 6. But that is your point, And that is point A. Okay, 
And so we plotted point A, and we would label it A. Now let's plot point B. Well, B means we're going to go in the x-axis 2. Well, that's here. This is 2. Then we're going to go in the y direction, negative 3. <coughs> oh, I should wear a mask. Don't worry, it didn't get you. And so if we go the y direction, now this is the negative y direction. Remember the y-axis laid down. This is the xy plane, flat. The z plane's coming up. And so if we go right to negative 3, that would be right here. X is 2 because you would come out parallel to the y-axis. And you would come out 1, 2, 3. So it has to be about that long. 1, 2, 3. And then we're going to go up 5. Well, we're going to go straight up. But where is this? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I know some of you are like, I can't draw this. Well, just try it. Now, if you're having a lot of trouble, remember it's the corners of a box. If this is 2 and this is 3, you come over 3 and you got your angle 2. If this is up 5, then this one would be up 5, which isn't as tall because you're coming down to be parallel with this. So you're not going all the way up to the 5. You are making a three-dimensional box. And that vertex that we want is point B. And I need the pen. So this is going to be point B right here. And those are hard to draw. And you only have to draw a couple. And so use your straight edge. And so some of you, just take your time and do the best you can. And so real life plotting points, that's how Xbox games look so much cooler than Atari games. Because they're plotting points in three dimensions. And it's like, whoa, look at it, come at you. And so a lot more detail. And these are triple ordered pairs, okay? And so let's go and see what else we can do to points in three dimensions, just like we do to points in two dimensions. Find the distance, find the midpoint. And we don't necessarily need graphs for these, but you can, but we can still find them. So let's go to the bottom of the notes. Down here, so we go down here to the bottom, it says find the midpoint. And so maybe I better zoom this out a little bit so we can see all this at once. It says find the midpoint of 7, negative 2, 5, and negative 3, 6, negative 1. So the x-axis, we're coming out 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is 7 on the x-axis. If we go to negative 2, that'd be here. And z, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But where is that located? Well, if you went 2 this way, you need to go straight parallel out 2 this way. And then you need to go up 5, well that has to be parallel from here. So then you take that same distance and it's right here. So floating out in space, here is point C. Now we can plot point D. Well, this is X, Y, and Z. So in the X axis, don't go this way first. This is the X axis and this is the negative X axis. So we're down here at negative 3. This is the positive y-axis, so we're over here. This goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's how far you want to go that exact same distance. So you're actually going a little further than you were here. And so that's that, but then it says down negative 1. Well, here's negative 1 on the z. And so that's how far you're going to go down. And this point, you got to picture it as floating out in space. Well, here's the deal. This point's floating out in space. This point's floating out in space. And I want to find the midpoint of those two points. And this segment is like skewed to the XY plane, the YZ plane, the XZ plane. It's just kind of going through there. Now, where is the midpoint of that segment? Now, we could visualize it, but where is it? as a triple ordered pair, you know, is it right there? But that's like floating out in space. How could we get that? 
What do you think we could do to find that? Camden? Yeah, we could just find the midpoint, pretend just like we had an X and a Y. What's halfway between 7 and negative 3? Then what's halfway between negative 2 and 6? Then what's halfway between 5 and negative 1? We're just extending the same thinking to three dimensions. And so it's a lot easier in plotting this in three dimensions. And so we have, what's halfway, Cam, between 7 and negative 3? 2? How'd you get that? Oh, yeah, because for the triple ordered pair of midpoint, you would just add 7 and negative 3 and divide by 2, which is 4 divided by 2, which is 2. The midpoint is going to start at a 2 on the x-axis. And then we'll check this. Then the y, well, that'd be negative 2 plus 6 divided by 2. Well, that's 4 divided by 2, so that's 2 comma 2 comma what? Well, this would be 5 plus negative 1 divided by 2. That's 4 divided by 2. Is the midpoint really at 2 comma 2 comma 2? Let's see. What color should we go with? Orange? We go this way too, then we go this way too, which would make a box with that, and then we go up to. Sure enough, this midpoint is right there. It's 2 comma 2 comma 2. And I tell you, it's a lot easier to find without drawing a picture. And just go average these, average these, and average these. Same thing with finding the distance of a segment in three dimensions. And so look at that. I squeeze right between the work and the problem. And if we find the distance on this, if we have 0, x is 0, y is negative 1, and z is 7, that means this is going to be in the yz plane because you have a y and a z. So that's as simply as going, this is the negative y-axis. So negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Since this is in the yz plane, it's easier to find. So that's g because we didn't go any x's. And then h is going to be negative 2. Well, this is the negative x-axis. Then y is positive 2, so we're going to go this way, 2, the same as this, which would probably be right about there. And then we're going to go up 1. So this one's floating out in space, and that's h. And we want to find the length of this segment that's floating out in space. Not find the midpoint of it this time, but find the length. Well, how would we find the length anyways? Well, we would create a Pythagorean theorem problem. We'd draw a right triangle. But in this, this problem, I don't want to make this so big. If we go right to up one, we have this. This one's in this plane. And so you could be in this plane to right to come over to this plane, come back, come over here, make your box, which is kind of hard to see. But notice the distance of this is not a face diagonal. It's a space diagonal. So we're doing the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem problem. So it's like, how far is zero and negative two apart? What would that be, Avery? Yeah, they're two apart, so that's your a squared. How far apart are, ah, I want a different color. Negative one and positive two. How far apart are they, Aiden? Yes, they're three apart. And so that'd be three squared. Remember how we would do the distance formula rather quickly? How far apart are the x coordinates squared? And a negative squared is a positive, and a positive squared is a positive, so it doesn't really matter if it's negative or positive. And then this last one, how far apart are 1 and 7? Well, they are 6 apart. And so this would be 6 squared. And so that will equal my three-dimensional distance formula. That's the distance squared. So what is 4 plus 9, which is 13, plus 36, 
and that equals d squared. So if you want to find d, you just square root it all. And 13 plus 36 is 49. You mean Mr. Nice and even knows his Pythagorean quadruples? Yeah. So that length is the distance, and it's exactly 7. The length of this line right there, the space diagonal in three dimensions, is a 7. And we found it. We found a three-dimensional midpoint, and we found a three-dimensional distance. And we just apply. We do the same thing with the x and the y. We just tack on the z. And we don't really, we can visualize what it is, but that gets kind of hard to draw all these. Okay? So for our assignment today, it's page 718, 1 to 29 odd. And so when you look at the homework, the first ones, are, these are way at the back, like the extra lessons. But you know, just because we're learning, we're trying to give you everything possible, as much as we can, as if we were in school. And so this says, write the coordinates of A, B, C, and D. So on your homework, write A, and then you're going to write a triple ordered pair. It's going to have three coordinates, the X, the Y, and the Z. And remember, the X, the positive's here. The Y positive's here, and the Z positive's up here, okay? And you can go through on which coordinate plane. Well, if, if Z is 0, this lies in the X, Y plane, okay? 11 and 13 are the tough ones because you have to draw them. It stinks to be you, but yes, you have to do it. I can do it. You don't want me always smarter than you, so yes, you need to know how to do it. The job of every teacher is to make you guys, the students, smarter than me. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. And some of you, you're already there. So, And then on these last ones, find the midpoint. And yes, you might have a little algebra. Oh, I guess we don't have to do 18. And then find the distance, they said, to the nearest tenth. You want n plus, you can do simplest radical form, and then to the nearest tenth. When you get down to 25... How do you know if it's scaling isosceles or equilateral? Well, find the distances or draw it out and see if it's equal. And so 27, show that it's a right triangle. And then problem 29, you have to find the volume. Well, how do you find the volume of a rectangular pyramid? What is that? Carissa? One-third area of the base times the height. Yes, or one-third length times width, but where's the height, Car Carissa? Times height. Length times width times height. And those length and width are on an angle. And so, and then divided by three. And then finding the volume of a box. I don't think that one's too tough, okay? So, I hopefully all this recorded so I don't have to do it again. But we miss all you guys. You're doing a great job. Hopefully, maybe some of you can be in that countdown round this afternoon. It's all new. I don't know what it's like, but thank you to those of you that participated in the other online competition, the Math Counts State 1. And hang in there. Email me your questions. And I hope all you guys have a great weekend after you get this work done. And as we're getting towards the end of the year, don't be saving all the stuff till Sunday night. you got to give me time to get things in. So get the stuff in right away. Okay? So, hey, we'll see you guys. Email me. Let me know how it's going. Okay, bye-bye.